Hi, my name is Mr. Exim and welcome to my EdTech channel where I show you how to get the most out of technology in the classroom. This video is all about how to have a remote lesson with your class on Microsoft Teams. I will go through step by step exactly how to set it up, what options you have during your lesson and how you can share it afterwards. Okay, so here I am in Teams and I want to have a remote live lesson with this class. Now I could do that straight off by clicking the Meet button at the top in a particular channel for that class. That would work absolutely fine, but actually I prefer to schedule my lessons in advance by clicking on the drop down arrow and do Schedule a Meeting. Okay, I give it a title. I don't need to add required attendees it will um, automatically send this invite to everybody in the class. If there's somebody else extra who I want to come to this lesson, then I could add them in there. When I'm ready, I click the send button. There we go, and it's added it into the chat there as a new post, and I can start the meeting from there. And the little notification is because I'm logged in here as the student, and on their emails you can see they've now been emailed with this particular lesson okay they can RSVP by and click accept it will then go into their calendar It'll go into their calendar on their email but it will also go into their calendar on teams now this is great because it means that uh, they will get a reminder about this lesson it also means they can join the lesson straight from within the calendar or when that reminder pops up so it's going to make it much harder for the student to miss this lesson if I schedule it in advance in this way. Okay, so it comes to me wanting to now start this lesson. I can go into the uh, and click join or I could go into my calendar and join it from there. So I'm going to start my lesson. I've got the new Teams uh, options here for when you start a lesson. I've got my video here. I can click on the settings if I need to change the video input or the microphone input. I can change my background. At the moment I've got it blurred, but I could choose one of these or I could add my own custom background if I want. When you're ready, just click join now. Now the students, they will be able to join from their calendar, like I said, just by clicking join now, they can see when a meeting is in progress and they can click join there straight off. Or if they're in the team, they will also be able to see that that meeting or that lesson has already started, who's already in the lesson, and they'll be able to click join there as well. So it's easy for them to join in. So here I am as a teacher. Now, as students join, uh, their, their little faces will pop up in the little boxes. I can see my participants by clicking on the participants button here, and it will give me a list of everybody who is in the meeting. I'll also see if they've raised their hand, if they've got a question, maybe I've muted them, but they've got a question, they might click the raise hand button, and I'll get a little, a little a notification there, and I'll be able to see who that is to be able to respond to them. I can also change their uh, meeting status by choosing the participant and clicking on the three dots and I'll be able to manage their permissions and be able to decide whether they can present or not. That's quite useful. I've also got the little chat here as well, which is great. Now, in Teams, you may find that you can't see everybody or everybody's only uh, got their faces along the bottom as little pictures. And that means you need to switch on the large gallery view uh, or even better, the together mode view. Now to do that, you click on the little three dots here and you choose these options. Large gallery will be able to show you 49 people on the screen at once and together mode will do even better than that. It will take their heads and it will take them out of their boxes and it will superimpose them into a virtual sort of lecture environment. Much more uh, natural environment for communication like this uh, and much uh, lower stress levels uh, and tiredness levels from staring at a screen all day by doing that has been shown um, with Microsoft's research. So together mode, I highly recommend switching that on once your lesson is up and running.
Okay, so another display feature that's quite useful to know about is the Spotlight tool. And um, what this does is it uh, you can spotlight somebody in the class, probably yourself most of the time as the teacher, who's going to take up the majority of the screen. Okay, rather than everybody having their own little tile, you may want to be presenting, for example, not necessarily doing a screen share, but just be talking and you want most of the attention to be on you rather than everybody looking at everybody else. And you can spotlight people very easily on the participants list here just by clicking on the three dots, left click on the three dots and use the spotlight me button. Okay, you become spotlighted. Uh, as it says here, your video is highlighted for everyone in the meeting to see. And you can spotlight a particular student if you wanted to uh, as well. Um, do note though that when you are recording this meeting, which I'll talk about towards the end of this video, this feature isn't recorded in this way. So when you record a meeting, it will record everybody uh, equally uh, as a little square, just like a large gallery view. Um, and it won't record whoever's been spotlighted as the main uh, size picture as you're seeing you know, right now. I'll show you a little workaround that when we get to the recording feature uh, later on in the video. It is something that uh, teams are working on at the moment and they hope to uh, release an update to solve this problem uh, very shortly. Okay, so during the lesson you've got a few options. Okay, you have got uh, the option of going into breakout rooms now, which is a, a new feature in Teams. This works very much like the Zoom breakout rooms. I can choose how many rooms I want. I can choose up to 50 breakout rooms. I can automatically assign students into those breakout rooms, or I can manually do it. I can change the names of the breakout rooms, and I can uh, send announcements out to the breakout rooms. Each breakout room works like its own little meeting. They've got all the meeting options in there. They'll have meeting chat. They'll be able to record their meetings. They'll have a, a meeting whiteboard as well. And I I can view all that content uh, at the end of the meeting uh, once I finish my class. So that's a really great way to allow the students into smaller groups for brainstorming and any kind of group activity or work that they need to do. I can share my screen, okay, if I click on the share content button here, uh, and I can share my whole desktop, I can share uh, my web browser, and remember if, you want, if you're showing a, a video, maybe a YouTube video, something like that, you want to click on the include computer sound button here so that the sound is broadcast to them through there. Okay, I, remember, I can scroll down to, to see all the different windows I've got here, I can open up a particular PowerPoint, or I could launch the meeting whiteboard, which allows me to write and draw, but also I can allow the students to do that as well if I want them to write their opinions, or that sort of thing. If you're a OneNote user, uh, it's a great option here to launch OneNote. Uh, and you could look at students' work if you've got a class notebook, or you could even just use this as a type of whiteboard uh, and go through. You could uh, open up a PDF in here or a Word document, and you can write on there, draw on there. You can go through past paper questions. You could do whatever you want, uh, what you typically do in a lesson as it uh, itself. Okay, so sharing your screen really important part of uh, Teams. If you need to get out of that sharing, then just move your mouse up to the top and you can see what's going on here. Um, and I can stop presenting, okay? Uh, and then it will go back to my Teams meeting. Now in terms of sort of communication during the meeting, as I said, you've got the chat option here, but I can also turn on uh, what's called live captions. Now live captions will listen to my voice and it will give running subtitles at the bottom of the screen. It's a really useful feature if somebody's got poor audio, they can't quite hear what's going on, uh, or maybe you've got uh, students uh, with a different first language. Um, and so it's just helpful for them to be able to see the words as well as hear them. Uh, it will, you'll notice it will tag who's talking, it recognizes who's talking so they can follow the conversation. So that's a nice feature, you get that meeting transcript there. Okay, so to record the meeting, it's really simple, you go to the three dots at the top here and you click start recording. Okay. Everyone will get a notification at the top just to say that the meeting is being recorded. And if you go into the chat area, you'll see that uh, the meeting is the start recording option has come up in the chat. Okay. And like I said, it will record whatever you're doing in the meeting, but it won't record you as a spotlighted uh, person. So if you're hoping to have your face as the main part of the recording, 
then that won't work if you're just recording it in this way. I did mention I'd show you a little workaround for this while we're waiting for Teams to fix this problem. There is one way you can do this. You can switch off your, oh, your camera in Teams and you can start up your camera app on your computer by just typing it into the search bar at the bottom and there you go you've got your camera launched now if you share your screen uh, in Teams uh, it will record whatever your screen is viewing okay so, and I click share and I go for my well I could just go for the camera or I could go for the whole screen uh, let's go for the whole screen here there we go now it's actually going to record just me. So we won't see all the other little tiles, all the other people in the class. It will just record just me. But like I said, teams are working on fixing that recording of spotlighted people. For now though, uh, let's go back to the teams recording and I'll show you what happens when you stop the recording and where it goes. Okay, so when I want to stop the recording, I go back to the top here and do stop recording. I'm going to leave this meeting. And then here we go, back in Teams, you can see that the meeting has been posted here. Now, it used to be posted to Stream. Uh, it's not posted there anymore. Uh, all meetings are now posted to SharePoint if they're within a team like this, or if they're in a particular individual chat, they'll go to a personal OneDrive. Uh, and it's actually much better for this reason. It will launch it separately and you, everybody within that team will have access to that video and all the videos are saved in one location in a file on SharePoint for that team uh, and uh, you could share it with people outside of that team as well if you needed to um, as, the, as the meeting owner. So hopefully that's given you what you need to have a remote lesson on Teams. Be sure to check out all my Teams quick tip videos on my channel for more help and support with Microsoft Teams. For now though, I hope that was useful and thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon. See you next time.